Excellent. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Texas Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you all for joining us here today. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions to our presenters at any time. Your cameras and microphones are off, so panelists cannot see or hear you. So put those questions in the Q&A section. And this is uh, the final session for the day and also the final uh, session for the college fair. So we thank you all for joining us. This presentation is gonna be recorded and within about a week, we will make it available on strivescan.com slash Texas. And I am going to welcome our presenters today. We have a list of colleges, Wabash College, University of Evansville, St. Mary's College, Purdue University, DePaul, DePaul College, or sorry, DePaul University, and Butler University. And I will now hand it off to our first presenter. Wabash College. Awesome, thanks everybody. So glad that you could spend some time with us um, tonight. Uh, get my screen shared here. Okay, um, my name is Tyler Wade and I am an Associate Director of Regional Admissions at Wabash College. Um, Wabash is a small private liberal arts college uh, located in Crawfordsville, Indiana. Um, Crawfordsville is just about 45 minutes outside of Indianapolis or just about three hours south of Chicago. Um, and at Wabash, we talk about educating our students to learn more, earn more, lead more, and play more. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit tonight about how we do each of those things. So first, when we talk about educating our students to uh, learn more, uh, we talk about doing that, again, through a pretty rigorous liberal arts curriculum. Now, when I say liberal arts, uh, basically, that's just a fancy word for a broad-based sort of general education. So similar to what you take in high school, students at liberal arts colleges take classes in math and science and the social sciences and the humanities and the arts sort of build that broad-based foundation. Now you still specialize in areas for a major and a minor, but most of your classes come from uh, the college at large. So it's a more sort of well-rounded um, education. We think that's beneficial for a couple of different reasons. I think one of those is uh, it helps make you a better problem solver and really whatever kind of career path you go into you're gonna be doing problem solving of some kind. And I think the best problem solvers are people who can take a problem and look at it from multiple perspectives. I think it's also beneficial because it gives you a skill set that can be transferable from position to position. Um, and so you're gonna have uh, a chance to make sure that you're set up not just for that first job out of college, but for all the ones that come after that. Um, like I said, our classes are pretty small, average class size is 11, pretty heavily discussion-based. Um, and then, you know, this, uh, these rankings sort of speak to that classroom experience. So these are national rankings. Um, we're ranked third for most accessible professors, 10th for professors get high marks, and 13th for the best classroom experience. Again, those are all really important parts of what's going to make your experience uh, at college worthwhile. It's having that awesome um, opportunity to have really close relationships with faculty and staff. Um, you can also see these national rankings for our alumni network, internship opportunities, and career services. Um, so, you know, part of college, uh, in addition to sort of expanding your uh, mind, is also going to be um, making sure that you find a job afterward. And um, the nation's number one ranked alumni network, number one internship opportunities, and number five career services, like we offer at Wabash, help you do just that. Um, that helps you kind of on the pathway then towards uh, earning more. Um, this is just a slide that gives you some statistics about uh, sort of our outcomes that our students have. So ones I'd like to point out in here, on here always are our 94% acceptance rate in the medical school. Uh, that's about two times the national average. Um, our 88% law school acceptance rate, um, which is also well above the national average, and the fact that one in 10 of our graduates is an executive at the company that they work for. Um, some really impressive uh, outcome statistics there. We have graduates in a whole bunch of different uh, career fields, but obviously business, law, and medicine tend to be sort of the big three areas that our students um, go to work at. Um, this is an example here of some of the places where um, our students have gone on to internship uh, or internship opportunities, um, graduate school programs or jobs after college. I'm sure you'll recognize some of the brands uh, that are listed here. 
Um, we also talk about educating our students to lead more through a lot of, of different ways to be involved in campus. Uh, at Wabash College, we only have one rule, which is the gentleman's rule, which is that the student is expected to conduct himself at all times on and off the campus as a gentleman and responsible citizen. Um, and so there are lots of ways to be able to be involved uh, in that leadership opportunities, whether that's through student government, um, in your fraternity, um, or a club or organization on campus. Um, we empower our students uh, to have a $250,000 budget each year for their student government. And so being involved in student government um, farms that money out to the 80 different clubs or organizations to support programming on campus. And so being involved uh, in that is a great way um, to kind of put on your resume that you were involved in event planning, budget management, and some really awesome opportunities there to get involved. Uh, lastly, we talk about educating our students to play more. Uh, athletics is a big part of how we do that at Wabash. You can sort of see information about our athletic programs there. We are a member of NCAA Division III and complete in the North Coast Athletic Conference. We have 12 different varsity sports uh, and just added men's volleyball this last year. Um, but if athletics is not your thing, there's also a whole bunch of ways to be involved in other things on campus, um, whether that is going to an art exhibition, uh, a music recital, a play. We have a really strong theater program at Wabash. Um, we are located in a small town called Crawfordsville, which has sort of all of the communities of small town Indiana, nice cute little shops and restaurants. We're also pretty centrally located to other colleges and universities in Indiana, um, as well as about 45 minutes away from Indianapolis, which is the nation's 16th largest city, which has a whole bunch of entertainment uh, and food options as well. So lots of ways to have fun and be able to, to kind of get involved. This is just some information about some important deadlines, um, how the application process to Wabash works and information about scholarships. Wabash has sort of had a longstanding commitment as an institution for costs not being what gets in the way of student coming to Wabash. So we offer very generous merit and need-based um, financial aid um, to all students. Applications are still open for this cycle. So if you're still looking at a college, we'd be happy to look at your application. Um, the last thing that I will close with uh, is just sort of this sort of statement as well. There's only one college in the nation that made the list of all of the things that you see there, and that was Wabash College. And so we hope that you are on or that you add us to uh, your list. Now, thanks so much. And we'll turn it back over to Peter. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is the University of Evansville. Hello, so my name is Jill Fisher and I'm an admission counselor with the University of Evansville. And I just wanna go through just some fast facts real quick. So you might be asking, where's the University of Evansville? We are in Evansville, Indiana, which is in that Southwestern corner of the state. We're the third largest city in the state with several major cities, only two to three hours away. At UE, our total enrollment is about 2,400 students with 2000 of those being in our undergraduate population. You can see by our low student to faculty ratio of 11 to one and average class size of 16, that we offer small classes to help students better engage with our faculty. Our professors want to get to know you as a person, not just as a name or a number on their roster. And our incredible faculty teach because that's what their passion is. They want to be a mentor to you. They want to help you successfully reach your goals. At UE, we have over 80 different majors and areas of study. Some of those unique programs include creative writing, archaeology, statistics and data science, and our theater program. We also have direct entry opportunities into our nursing program where you would start first semester in nursing. We also have athletic training, doctor of physical therapy, and physician assistant science. You can find the full list on our website. All of our students are encouraged to study abroad and have at least one internship during their time at UE. And then as for athletics, we are one of the smallest division one schools in the country, and we have 17 different athletic teams. We're known as the Purple Aces, and you can see our mascot, Ace Purple, down there in that bottom right corner. So how would you like to spend a semester living in a castle? At UE, you can study abroad at Harlickson College, which is our study abroad campus in England, and feel like you're attending the real Hogwarts. Harlickson is located just about an hour north of London, and we own and operate Harlickston, so your tuition and room and board is the same cost to go over there. Your scholarships, financial aid, all of that goes with you. So really your additional costs are, are gonna be based around um, your travel. You do have three day weekends each week, so you can travel throughout the UK, throughout Europe. There's even a couple extended weekends in there so you can go a little farther away. 
and all majors are able to go. Um, and for most majors, it actually works out best to go during sophomore year. Our nursing students, however, do go during the fall of their senior year so they can gain some clinical experience while they're over there in the um, public health care setting. So something else I want you to kind of think about, um, you know, are you someone who sees challenges as an opportunity to make a difference, make a positive impact? Um, if you answer yes to this, then you're what's known as a change maker. We are one of approximately 50 official change maker campuses around the world. Um, so this is a big deal. Our, it means our students and our faculty really set that bar for social innovation and making a positive change and impact in the world. When you get to campus, you can start making that difference from day one by taking our change lab classes. Our students are making positive change by promoting alternative energy sources, um, reducing infant mortality, and even providing microloans and services to women entrepreneurs, just to name a few of those um, different projects. And then we also have a high school change maker challenge where you can pitch your idea and that idea could even snag you a uh, full tuition scholarship. So let's talk about applying. Uh, we do offer free application. It's available on our website and through the common application. There are two different pathways. So traditional and test optional. We have actually been a test optional institution for probably four or five years now, and that will continue um, moving forward. If you, so if you aren't able to take the SAT or ACT, or maybe you're just not satisfied with your scores, you can apply test optional. So in that case, you would just submit an essay in place of those test scores. We are currently still accepting applications for any seniors still wishing to apply for this fall. Um, if you're not currently a senior, our application will open for you on August 1st of your senior year. So our current direct costs at UE are about $53,000 for tuition, fees, and room and board. Now that price might be, you know, sticker shock. Um, that's what it is. It's a sticker price. No one actually pays that as 100% of all admitted students receive a very generous scholarship to attend UE. Our scholarships are automatic, um, so you do not have to submit separate applications for those. And our scholarship grid is available on our website. We even have add-on awards that stack on top of that scholarship. One example is our FAFSA award. If you send your FAFSA to us, you get an extra $1,000 just for doing that. So apply for, I'm sorry, I just skipped back. Apply for um, outside scholarships and we'll stack those on top of what we give you as well. So visiting UE, um, we are doing in-person and virtual visits. I'm not gonna go through all the different ones, but you can see them listed here. I always recommend an individual visit as it's personalized to you and your interests and you get to meet with faculty and various departments across campus. And then since you all are in Texas, we do have a fly-in reimbursement program where you can receive up to $300 towards the cost of your flight to UE. Evansville does have an airport just 15 minutes north of campus. And uh, if you check out the link listed here, you can find out more information about that. And then be sure to follow us on social media to stay up to date on all the happenings around campus. You'll also find more photos of campus and videos from our current students. And then lastly, here is my contact information. Please don't ever hesitate to reach out by phone, text, or email. I will add my information as well as our website into the chat. Thank you so much for joining us this evening and I hope to connect with you all soon. Thank you so much. I will welcome our next presenter, St. Mary's College. All right, hello everyone. My name is Colleen Burke. I am an admission counselor here at St. Mary's and I am so excited to be here with all of you this evening. St. Mary's College is located in Notre Dame, Indiana. We are about 90 miles outside the city of Chicago and about two and a half, three hours outside of Indianapolis. We are a smaller institution. We have roughly around 1600 students on campus. So what that means is our students are getting a very individualized and personalized educational experience. Our average class size is around 17, 18 students. So it's nice knowing that when you're at St. Mary's, your professors are gonna know your name. They're gonna know who you are, your interests, all of that stuff. Along with that, we have over 50 academic programs that our students can get involved in at St. Mary's. Our more popular programs include nursing, education, business, communication studies, psychology. We have unique um, speech language pathology program with a master's offered, offered on campus as well. We have a dual engineering degree program with the University of Notre Dame um, and our STEM programs are very popular with our students too. 
we have a number of opportunities available both at St. Mary's and Notre Dame that our students can get involved in. Before you even graduate from St. Mary's, you will be conducting research um, that is specifically kind of tailored towards your major and what you're looking to do. Um, but we do have students even prior to their senior year getting involved in research here at St. Mary's. So for those of you who did not know coming here tonight, we are an all women's college. And as a proud alumna of St. Mary's myself, um, if you have any kind of myths and ideas in your head of what you think a woman's college is, I'm gonna ask that you throw them out. Um, I know when I was sitting in your shoes not terribly long ago, um, I thought a woman's college is going to be a mean girls experience, very clicky environment. And I quickly learned um, that that is not the case. It's a very supportive environment. It's a very empowering environment. It's a place where our students are really building up their confidence over their four years um, and really gaining the support to go and pursue what it is that they're truly passionate about um, and going into those careers that they're really looking to go into regardless of what they are after they graduate. You can see here that women who uh, graduate from women's colleges are more likely to go and complete a graduate degree versus women coming from public universities. And women who graduate from women's colleges also feel more prepared for their jobs than women coming from public universities. I think a lot of that really is because of the confidence that our students are building on campus. Um, and you can see here, uh, the results kind of speak for themselves. We have 95% of our recent graduates are either fully enrolled in a graduate program or with a full-time job within one year of graduation. We have a lot of resources available on campus for students to be part of that really amazing statistic that we have there. Uh, we have a career fair that we have hosted every year. Notre Dame has one that our students can go and get involved in. Um, we also have our career crossings office that works with students all four years and beyond. It is a lifelong service, so alums are welcome to come back and utilize the resources that those offices provide. You can see here a number of places um, that our students have ended up after graduating from St. Mary's. Our students really go all over the country and the world as well. And here at St. Mary's, we work incredibly hard to make the education that our students are receiving as affordable as possible. We have 100% of our incoming students receiving financial aid here at St. Mary's. This includes merit-based scholarships, which this year range from $15,000 to $30,000 and are renewable all four years. They also include St. Mary's institutional grant money, campus employment opportunities, student loans, and we also accept outside scholarships. Along with that, we also have our students graduating in four years. We have 94% of our St. Mary's students graduating in four years. So what's nice is here at St. Mary's, you don't have to worry about potentially an extra semester, year, year and a half of tuition. Uh, we are so confident that you will graduate in four years that we have our four-year graduation that states if you don't graduate because of something that we messed up on our end on time that we will work with you to cover the tuition and fees needed for you to get your degree from St. Mary's. Along with that, we are ranked in the top 100 national liberal arts colleges for 2021 and ranked number 47 in best value schools. So I mentioned uh, Notre Dame a little bit and we are actually located right across the street from the University of Notre Dame. So while our students get the benefits of being at an all women's college, they do get to be part of a tri-campus community with both Notre Dame and Holy Cross. Our students are welcome across the street to get involved in clubs and organizations, including marching band, ROTC, cheerleading. Students can get involved academically. Starting your sophomore year, you can take one course a semester at Notre Dame. Um, our students can go to the dances, social events, sit in the student section for all the home Notre Dame football games, basketball and hockey as well. So what's nice is students really get the best of both worlds. You can have that small school experience, that all women's experience, but you can still have that big school and co-ed experience if it's something that you're looking for. So a little bit about our admission process. We have two ways our students can apply. We are on the common application. So our juniors in the room here tonight can start applying to St. Mary's starting on August 1st. Uh, we are rolling admission as well. So students, if we have any seniors there, we are still accepting applications at this time. The big thing to note about our admission process is that we, we take a very holistic approach when it comes to reviewing our applications. We look at everything our students send us, including the application, essays, recommendation letters, all of that. At the end of the day, we want to ensure our students are going to be successful, not just for one year, but for all four years here at St. Mary's. So that's really the mindset that we have when we're reviewing those applications. We are a test option. We have been for about three years now and we'll continue to 
continue to do so moving forward. Um, so just know you have that option at St. Mary's and we also accept self-reported tests for Steele. And as I mentioned, I am your admission counselor. If you have any questions I can answer for you, please don't hesitate to reach out. We would love to see you either on campus soon for an in-person visit or virtually as well too. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you, Colleen. Next presenter is Purdue University. Hello, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here this evening. My name is Brenda Ramirez, and I am one of the assistant directors of admission for Purdue University. I am what we consider a regional uh, representative. So I actually, I am based out of Austin, Texas, um, and I do help recruit local students, both from the central and southeast areas of the state. Um, so a little bit about our university. Purdue is a large um, college. So we have just under 35,000 undergraduate student on our, students on our campus. Even though we are a public state university based out of the state of Indiana, we do also serve students from all over the country and all over the world. We have one of the largest international student populations, and we also have every single state represented on our campus. Even though we uh, may appear large, we still get to boast a really competitive student to faculty ratio of 13 to 1, and our average class size is 31. In terms of the environment of Purdue, we are definitely a college town. Um, again, we're located in West Lafayette, Indiana, which is about 60 uh, minutes from Indianapolis and about two hours south of Chicago. So students are close to larger cities and can oftentimes take a trip, a weekend trip, or um, some trips are sponsored through our student union board. Additionally, there's a lot of programming that goes on around campus as well, whether it's music festivals or Starry Night Arts and Crafts festivals. There's also a lot of local um, shops and restaurants and an ice skating ring, a movie theater. So students can definitely um, find ways to keep entertained during the weekend time. The other thing that I also like to encourage students to do is getting involved, whether you end up going to Purdue or somewhere else. Um, at Purdue, we do have close to 1,000 different student organizations that you can join. So there's typically something for everyone, whether um, you wanna join an academic club like pre-law society, or maybe you're really passionate about um, animals. So you can definitely volunteer for a uh, pause for cause, as well as pet a puppy club. Um, if you're maybe a really huge sports fans. We do have uh, division one teams, but there's also ways for you to get involved such as club sports and intramural sports. Now moving more into kind of the job readiness aspect of Purdue, because obviously we understand that your first priority is getting your degree. Your second priority should be getting that job um, or going to that additional degree program. So at Purdue, we have our Center for Career Opportunities, or CCO for short. Um, and so they are kind of your one-stop shop for all of your career needs, whether you're trying to put your resume together or you want to practice for an upcoming interview. Um, our CCO staff is great in getting students prepared. Um, about 80% of our students will have at least one career readiness uh, opportunity, whether it's a co-op or an internship. Um, we also have pre-professional professional advisors that you're disposal. So let's say if you're thinking you want to do pre-med or you're on the pre-law track, you can meet with our, our advisors to make sure that you're on track to completing the requirements necessary for admission into those professional programs. At Purdue, we do offer over 200 different majors within 11 academic colleges, as you see on the screen. Um, unfortunately, I cannot cover all 200 in the short uh, presentation, but I can definitely point out some of our more uh, popular programs that we get a lot of interest in. Um, the first one will be our College of Engineering. Um, so we do have a top nine program for engineering, and we um, offer 17 different disciplines within that college. However, first year students all go through what we call the first year engineering program, and then it's not until your second semester freshman year when you actually select your discipline. Our direct admin nursing program within our College of Health and Human Sciences 
is also, um, we get a lot of applications for that program. Um, students actually start clinical rotations um, right at their sophomore year. And then our professional flight program within the Polytechnic Institute, it is uh, ranked number two in the country. We're actually the first university to have our own airport on campus. So that's just kind of a fun fact. When it comes to uh, evaluating applications and kind of what we look for when we are looking at our applicants, uh, we do practice a holistic review. So essentially, we are going to look at a variety of different factors on your application, um, you know, including your minimum high school coursework, making sure you meet our minimum high school course requirements, the course rigor, your grades, uh, extracurricular activities, and as well as your personal essay and responses to our supplemental question. So again, it's really a holistic um, view based on the information that you're able to provide within your application. And um, just to finish off with kind of some important dates. Uh, so if you are a junior, uh, just keep in mind that our application does go live August 1. We are on the Common app. Um, and then the other date that I also like to highlight is November 1st, which is our early action deadline. Um, I usually encourage everyone to apply by November 1st just because you are automatically reviewed for our, any of our merit scholarships. So you definitely want to make sure that uh, you know, you kind of make the best chance for those getting one of those scholarships. And then lastly, um, I do like to kind of be transparent regarding our tuition, especially for out of state students, since I know finances is definitely something that you need to factor in when you're doing your college search. So for our non resident tuition, uh, when you add up room and board, as well as tuition fees, it ends up being just under $40,000 a year. The other thing I also like to highlight is that Purdue has had frozen tuition for 10 consecutive years now, uh, where traditionally other post-secondary institutions might increase that between three to 5%. Um, and if you liked what you hear, heard here, definitely visit us. Um, and we have a lot of amazing virtual experiences that you can check out. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brenda. And I will welcome our next presenter, DePaul University. Thank you. Let me share my screen here. Hopefully everyone is doing great tonight, enjoying hearing about all the great universities and colleges. Uh, for the next six minutes, I'm going to tell you a little bit about DePaul University. Um, if you're not familiar with DePaul, we are located in Greencastle, Indiana, which is a wonderful college town. Um, you're, you're just typical college town. We're close by Indianapolis um, and also Chicago, so another Indiana um, campus for you to enjoy hearing about tonight. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about how to find your gold within at DePaul University. We have about 2,000 students, just hovering under 2,000, and we have a College of Liberal Arts, and we also have a School of Music at DePaul. Some things that we are excited to tell you about is we have 20% first generation students, and that speaks to the level of um, attention that we can give you from the application process all the way through to graduation. We love to give our students support and attention and help with anything college related. We have 19% legacy students. Uh, families like to continue the DePa tradition. We also have about 29% of students that come to our campus to play D3 athletics. We have a lot of um, spirit on our campus and a lot of the students from the Southeast USA actually come to play athletics. We also have 39 states represented on campus and including yours. Within our College of Liberal Arts, we have 49 majors and 56 minors and I'd like to take some time to showcase some of our most popular majors. We have economics, communication, computer science. We're seeing a big uptick in students being interested in global health um, and probably due to the pandemic and due to the fact that our professors have been able to receive some great grant money. So there's options to do real time research basically on the pandemic. Also kinesthesiology has become super popular. That uh, track is almost like an anatomy track and a lot of our students that are thinking about med school enjoy that track. There's lots of opportunities for hands on and research there too. So we also have a school of music. If you have musical talent and you want to major in the school of music, we have a performance major and we also have a music education major. 
if you love music, but you're interested in more of a liberal arts major, you combine the two and do a five-year degree. You'll actually graduate with two degrees. You'll graduate with one from liberal arts. So for example, you might graduate with a liberal arts degree in computer science and then a school of music degree in performance. So you could have the best of both worlds and our music faculty is uh, top notch. Um, so you could take advantage of that. And also you could add music as a minor too. So that would be more of a four year program with either a music minor or a musical theater minor. Lots of different opportunities. At DePaul, we have an honors program that's kind of split in two ways also. We have the Honor Scholar Program, which um, encompasses all the degree tracks. So any degree that you're taking an Honor Scholar um, program, you could participate in. It will give you some of the smaller, higher level undergraduate requirement classes, some targeted research opportunities, uh, study abroad opportunities. Um, also, your senior year, you'll do a major thesis project, one-on-one -on -one working with a professor. So that's attractive to a lot of our students. The other programs that take your education one level higher are our fellows programs. And these are more tied to your major or what you wanna do once you graduate. And you can see we have environmental fellows, management fellows and media fellows. These three offer a semester long paid internship. And these are some of the top internships, top companies that recruit from our campus. Our fellows students tend to grab those internships and a lot of times they'll do more than one. Within these fellows programs too, you'll be doing thesis and research work. And all of these programs are part of the first year application process. So um, they require an extra essay and some require an interview, but we kind of walk you through that process as you're applying to. You're gonna be studying really hard at DePaul and actually at any college you go to, but you're also gonna have a good time. We have 120 clubs and organizations and we are excited about students getting involved. Most of our students, participate in three or four, maybe five or six clubs. And sometimes they'll do a club for to develop leadership skills, but then you could also do a club to try something new, maybe something you didn't do in high school. So we have salsa dance club, an Italian cooking club. Um, this is lots of opportunities to meet new friends that way too. We have 23 varsity D3 teams. They're so competitive. We have a lot of spirit on campus. You see this picture right here is our Monon Bell game. You heard from Wabash earlier tonight and they are our arch rival in football. And we play for the Monon Bell bragging rights and for the ability to have that bell on campus. We did not have the game this past year because of COVID and we won two years ago. So we still have the bell um, and we're hoping to keep it for many more years. Besides athletics, we have concerts, art shows, performances. We have a school of music and we bring in top notch music performances. We are um, a residential campus. We guarantee housing for all four years and um, prefer students live on campus all four years. So that you can take advantage of all the shows and things that are going on. And it's a great, it's a great resource to have. You'll never have the opportunity to do all these campus activities once you graduate. So we say, take advantage of them. We also have a lot of wellness programs at DePauw. You see some uh, students doing yoga there and they're doing yoga in a beautiful studio that overlooks a 500 acre nature park that we own. So lots of opportunities to have, um, you're gonna be working hard, but you want that balance too. And we're actually adding more and more with the pandemic. We don't want students to be stressed out. So we offer not only healthy type of wellness activities, but also spiritual and just well-being overall. And we also have pretty vibrant study abroad and internship programs too. So this is all something that we're proud of, some of the employers that recruit out of DePauw and um, also some of our statistics for graduation rate, med school acceptance and law school. I think my time is coming up soon. So I'm gonna show you uh, a screen with a little bit of information on how to apply. I dropped my contact information in the chat and I'm also probably gonna get a list of everyone who attended. So I'll send some follow-up, but these are our deadlines. And there's a screenshot if you wanna do that. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. And I'll hand it over to the next college. Thank you so much. Our next university is Butler University. 
Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. We are super eager here at Butler to connect with you today. Thanks for hanging around with my other Indiana colleagues here. Excited just to share about Butler and what we can offer you. So I've got a little friend on our screen tonight. That is Butler Blue the Fourth, our live mascot here on campus. He's definitely a fan favorite, especially if you come and visit us anytime on campus. However, Blue's going to take us through a journey of campus. Um, just a lighthearted way to show you what we can offer. As I mentioned, my name is Katie Poff. I'm also an alumna of the university, so you may hear me sprinkle a little bit about my experience throughout the next five minutes or so. Alongside that, I also just want to encourage you that um, you can reach out to myself or any of the other counselors after today's visits to follow up with questions or concerns. We all work primarily with your high school um, and your hometown area, so know that we're here to connect. But let's dive right in about Butler University. So where are we and who are we? Butler is located in the heart of Indianapolis, so we are um, a smaller private university. However, we can offer some really big dreams and goals. I like to say we're kind of that biggest small town vibe that you'll ever see, which just shy about 5,000 students. So we're not a super tiny university and not on the larger size. We're kind of in that medium range. We're going to have an opportunity to see a familiar face in Starbucks, but also the experience to always be meeting and surrounding yourself with new individuals. Our average class size is capped right around 22 students. This may be smaller than your current high school course. And we see that faculty to student ratio at 11 to one. I think these are really, really key numbers when it comes to looking at a college experience. Our faculty members are ones that are gonna know your name, your hometown, your experiences. They're gonna be the type that you can knock on the office in the middle of the afternoon to ask them questions or send an email late at night saying you need help or encouragement. They not only care about your well-being inside the classroom, but also outside of the classroom. And Butler has a really cool initiative with our BU Be Well model. It's just about bringing that Butler community together I'm helping you be well-rounded, like I mentioned, inside and, sa inside and outside of the classroom when it comes to your mind, um, your health, and your well-being. And all of this has led us to being the number one regional university in the Midwest, and we're really excited from that ranking. And truly think that small class size compared with that personal interaction with your faculty members and your peers really lead to that. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to take you through a journey at campus. And so we are one university with six different colleges. Something really unique as well is across these colleges, you'll often see students pick up a double major or a minor or have a focus. And so you can have a really unique track, right? You may be a biology student with dreams of going on to dental school who picks up a double major in broadcasting at Butler. Those endless opportunities are available to you. Alongside of that, all of our students will have a liberal arts core foundation. Um, this is because we want to ensure that our students are graduating as strong writers, researchers, problem solvers, and thinkers. And so you may be taking a ballroom dancing course or perhaps a food science course, um, maybe even dog walking, something a little outside the box, but brings you back together. I know from personal experience, math was never my strength. The idea of college calculus scared me, but I got to take a probability and board games class instead. And who knew Uno could provide me so many aspects later on in life. So I did mention that Butler Blue the fourth. Blue here is gonna take us on a trip down campus and he stops right here in the beginning at Robertson Hall. This is the first stop in our admissions office and financial aid, one of our many historic buildings on campus as well. And I do want to mention that we are open for in-person and virtual visit experiences. I am actually meeting with a family from Texas tomorrow. So if you do feel safe and comfortable, come join us on campus. If not, connect with us virtually via Zoom or other opportunities. Alongside that, you'll see him sporting his incredible little letterman jacket there. Um, that's to experience his academic and internship side. Over 75% of Butler students complete at least one internship, if not more, before graduation. We also see 40% of our students do a study abroad program of all sorts of types, um, traveling to all sorts of places. And last but not least, we do have a 98% placement rate after graduation, whether it be with a career of your choice or off to a graduate program. So know that the time and energy you're investing in Butler is going to take you well beyond. Now, Blue has made a next stop here to our solid pool, um, home of our homecoming experience. And right behind him is the historic Hinkle Field House. I mentioned that small town feel with that really big city opportunity. I mean, this is a great place to start. Butler has over 20 division one athletic teams. We're really eager this year as we're one of the host sites of March Madness. So if you're a basketball fan, catch us on your TV and especially Blue sporting as the mayor of March. Um, this year is we're really excited for what that can offer. Alongside that, I always add some fun facts. Pinkle Field House is the home of the movie Hoosiers as well. So like I said, a lot of cool opportunities. Um, our students also take advantage of the alumni connection, homecoming spirits, our bulldog beauty contest um, tradition around homecoming as well. Now Blue has now made his way to the observatory. 
where I also love to mention um, the beautiful Clues Memorial Hall. Our campus is full of tons of scientific opportunities, research availability, along with things such as the arts. So Clues Hall brings in historic um, performers along with writers and speakers as one of Indianapolis's largest theaters. Um, so if you're a fan of Broadway or good music, this is the place to stop. I also love to mention that we have one of the top ranked ballet program in the country and they perform a beautiful Nutcracker every year. And last but not least, I wanna give you that overview of our campus and appreciate all the time you've taken today. It's over 130 plus organizations. Butler is definitely eager to help you inside and outside of the classroom. And um, once again, I wanna encourage you to submit an application if you're a current junior by August 1st. If you're a senior listening, rest assured there's still time to apply. We are a test optional university and I'd love to share with you on a one-to-one -one basis um, what your experience at Butler could look like. So feel free to reach out via email I threw it in the chat, find me on our Find My Counselor website or check out our virtual tour opportunity. Happy to make Butler an experience individualized to you and what we can offer you overall. So once again, thanks for stopping by and we're super eager to have you all with us here tonight. Thank you so much, Katie. And now I invite all the uh, presenters to uh, turn their cameras back on. And I would like, we have a couple minutes left. Uh, so I wanted to pose a question to you all. You can all take a moment to answer, but uh, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? So, uh, I will, we can go round robin. You can, uh, anyone can just chime in. Happy to start. Oh, okay, okay. So happy to start. So I gave a sort of sneak peek to it, but at homecoming every year, we have the Butler Bulldog Beauty Contest. Um, it's a huge sponsored event. We were on recording it all over social media. Um, there are over two to 300 bulldogs of all types dressed up in costumes for the meanest mug and the coolest costume. And so I think it's just a really great way for people to bring their bulldog spirit. So 10 out of 10. Um, the Butler Bulldog Beauty Contest is my favorite tradition. Thank you. How about we go backwards from the order? We can do uh, DePaul next. Well, that's awesome. I, <laughs> Tyler might want to come in on mine. It's going to be the Monon Bell game, which we play Wabash. And it's a really fun game at the end of the football season. As I mentioned in my presentation, we have the bell right now. And fingers crossed we will be able to play in the fall and hold on to that bell. But I don't know. <laughs> His presentation mentioned about how great their sports teams are, so we'll see. <laughs> All right, uh, Brenda. Yeah, so I think, um, so I did attend Purdue and I have to say that probably one of my favorite traditions every year was uh, having the Grand Prix race. So um, if you're familiar with Indiana, if you've heard about the Indy 500 and so it's a really popular racing event. So at Purdue, uh, teams of students actually get together and they build their own race carts and then they race them for the Grand Prix race. Um, and we have a full weeks of event where there's a big concert uh, leading up to the race on Saturday. Excellent, awesome, thank you. Uh, Colleen? Yeah, so I would have to say as an alum also of St. Mary's, my absolute favorite tradition is the opening and closing of the circle that we do. Our first year students when they move to campus will participate in what we call a closing of the circle, which happens outside of our Le Mans Hall, which is kind of um, the residence hall that's most known on campus. It's where the admission office is and everything. Um, and we basically welcome all of our first year students and really kind of embrace them into the St. Mary's community and what their four years are gonna look like with us. And then fast forward four years, um, right before our students graduate from St. Mary's, they get in the same circle. Um, and instead of closing it, they are opening it up, kind of sending them off into the world, but reminding them that they are always going to be part of the St. Mary's community and they always have a home to come back to. Um, so that is my absolutely favorite tradition that we have. Thank you so much, Jill. All right, so my favorite tradition on our campus is an event called Road Trip Weekend. And unfortunately, we didn't get to have it this year because of COVID. But this is a weekend in February where we invite all high school seniors that have been admitted to the university and we invite them to come try us out for the weekend. You're hosted by a current student. You get to live in the dorms for the weekend. We have all kinds of activities going on throughout um, campus, but also in the um, city of Evansville. So you can kind of get a taste of what the, the city is like. 
Um, it's just a great way to experience and see if it's going to be a good fit for you. And current students love it because they were road, they came to road trip. They remember how awesome their host was and they want to kind of carry that tradition on. So we're very hopeful that next year it's going to happen. This year we are doing kind of something similar, but it's more on a virtual front, um, unfortunately. But we've been doing it since the 80s. So this was the first year we have missed it. Um, so it was unfortunate because of COVID. <laughs> Thank you. And Tyler. Yeah, you know, I don't know if Jacqueline knows this, but I work at Wabash. I went to Wabash, but I actually grew up in Greencastle where DePaul is. So the bell game is my favorite tradition. Now, she did neglect to, to include that the only way DePaul could keep the bell for two years in a row is from a once in a century global uh, pandemic. So Wabash has won eight of the last 10, and eight out of 10 isn't uh, very bad. Uh, my other, uh, the other tradition on campus would be chapel talks. So Wabash does talks on every Thursday where a member of the campus is invited to come and give a speech sort of about the topic of um, their choice. And it's a really cool time for our community to kind of come together, not religiously affiliated uh, per se, but just a, a conversation that's important about what's going on on campus. So thanks. Thank you so much, Tyler. And that wraps it up for us today. Thank you everyone for joining us at the College Fair, and we will have, uh, after we close out this uh, session, you'll get a quick survey to check out with just four questions. So we ask you to uh, do that. And then this recording will also be available in about a week on strivescan.com slash Texas. Thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you for all the presenters and everyone have a good evening. Take care. <laughs>